Hey, it's Polly with Get Busy Thriving, and I've just been out on a walk this morning, and you know, I just wanted to say something about like that that those things are tied together: doubt, belief, confidence, lack of confidence, and uh, I'm really getting clear about. Um, I think there's two things that go on in the mind when when you need to make that decision, you need to make that choice of. Um, you know, I want to. I want to stop this habit that I have that I don't want to have anymore. And I'm looking at it in like two ways. One, one, one of the things that keeps people from making that choice and having like forevermore lasting recovery or whatever you want to call it is, they they lose belief in possibility. So they don't believe that it's possible that they could ever you know stop that. And I had that uh, going for myself when I, uh, you know, 20 years in. I was just resigned, you know, 20 years of an eating disorder. I was just like, you know, I I had stopped believing in possibility, let alone myself. So you have to have possibility thinking alive. You have to believe that it can be done is the first step. You have to believe like, okay, somebody else can do it. I can do it. And then the other thing is you have to let go of self-doubt. And I was thinking a lot about that. And I wanted to really focus on that here. Um, There's... There's like tons of things you can do to regain self-confidence or belief in yourself or belief in your word. You know, one of my lines is my word is law in the universe. And I believe that because I own it. I I walk my talk. I I act upon it. I act on what I say I'm going to do. I keep my commitments. Um, You know, I clean it up if I if I if I make a you know, if I don't keep to something. But I just want to share a couple things. So, you know, one of them is. Um, Tony Robbins has a great thing about certainty. So confidence comes from certainty, I would say, one of the ways. But confidence comes from certainty. So we can feel more confident when we're certain we're going to get the outcome we want, right? If we know, like, okay, I do this, this is going to get me where I want to go, then we can feel more certain about it. We have confidence that that will work. So, you know, one of the things you can do is you can look for other areas of your life where you have certainty, you have confidence, you are successful, you are doing things that, that create success. A lot of the people that I coach that, that maybe haven't made the choice in this particular area of their life to, to turn things around, they have tons of success in their life, huge success. And what happens, I think, is they have this failure over and over and over again. You know, I mean, 20 years, you know, it's no wonder I was resigned. And if you're feeling that way too, like this will never happen. It's because you look at your whole life you know, all the things that you've achieved, and you're like, wow, I can do all this. How come I can't do this stupid thing? How come I can't overcome this eating disorder, drinking, smoking, whatever it is? And you just give up, right? You're like, well, whatever. And then you just belittle. You make all those other successes, all those other areas of your life where you are a success, insignificant. Like, nope, if I can't do this, then none of that else matters. And then you start this downward self-fulfilling spiral called self-doubt, 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 and you doubt yourself greater and greater. It's no wonder, you know, you've got this Miss Perfect going on in your head that says, well, you're not good enough, this and that, and you just start believing her more and more. So a couple of things is, one, I would say, like, get to know yourself again. Like, know thyself is a big thing in personal development, and I see it over and over again lately in, um, you know, how to really take a moral inventory. Like, I think if you, I'm just going to give you a couple of ways that I would suggest on how to regain that confidence in yourself and turn that self-doubt back around and begin to believe in yourself. So one of them is, you know, take a deep moral inventory. Like, write down all the ways that you are great. Like, and you don't have to share this with anybody. Just do it for yourself. Like, sit down and just write down, you know, I'm a kind person. I, I, I love people. I'm good to animals. I donate to charities. I volunteer, whatever. I take good care of my kids. I take good care of this or whatever. Take a deep moral inventory and really sit there and let that soak in. So you know, wow, I am a good person because that, those meant, that mental chatter, that self-doubt can be just crippling. So it's time to rebuild that inner self-esteem, that inner self-confidence by taking a moral inventory of what's really so because we don't often focus on those qualities of ourselves. We don't often take that time for reflection and realize, wow, you know, I am a good person. I am a decent human being. I do great things. 
And then that's the second one is look, at for, look for your successes in other areas. I'm doing some uh, work on myself right now in the area of business and I'll tell you, I have huge success in some areas of my life and then I've picked this one area and I say, oh, I don't have success here and, and that means that I'm, I'm worthless or I'm not good at anything. And I just translate it backwards, ask backwards instead of what my coach has me doing right now is looking at the areas where I have huge success. So in the past year, I've done an amazing job of, of winning, um, you know, races and competitions and things like that. And she's like, translate that, bring that success, that badass you over into this area. So it's, it's like, I spend time focusing on what makes me great over there. I think about what I've accomplished um, with my races. Sometimes I'll just put my medals around my neck and you know, I've got a lot of them and it's like the weight of them is like, yeah, and you kind of strut around, right? So like notice where you have wins in your life. What are you proud of in your life? Take an inventory of that. Like what are you doing great in the world? I'll tell you most of the people I coach have tons that they should could be if they chose to be proud of. So what can you be proud of? Like, look at your life and say, wow, I'm good at this. I'm good at this. I did that great. You know, I've achieved this, blah, 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 blah. Doing that. And then notice that inner dialogue if you can. I won't go into that great detail because that takes more practice. That takes a lot of consciousness, mindfulness. A lot of people get a breakdown in, in being mindful. So if you can be more mindful, I would say pick one of these each week and work on it and just allow it to soak in. So week after week, rebuilding that confidence, that inner knowing that you're a good person, you're capable, you're, you, you've got this. And then, you know, there, there's, there's so many things that you can do. Um, be thankful, you know, and the energy, a positive energy of gratitude. One of the things I was thinking too is like, you know, whatever your habit looks like, <laughs> I was thinking, stop walking down those dark alleys. Stop walking down those dark alleys that you know lead to crap, lead to you doing stuff that you don't want to do to yourself. What are those dark alleys in your life? You know, where do you like, oh, if I, you know, if I, if I like a coaching client left me a message this morning, she said, well, and she has a routine that looks like, well, I talk myself out of exercising in the morning and then I go and eat something that I don't want to do and then I overeat it and then I, you know, and then I get rid of it. And it's like, that's a dark alley you've been walking down for years. How are you going to avoid that dark alley? We can avoid those dark alleys, you know? It's like, if you knew that there's a bad neighborhood and on your way to work, you would avoid it. <laughs> You'd know how to avoid it. So I encourage you to look at those dark alleys in your life and go, this, this is one of my dark alleys. I, I know that it's better that I don't go down that alley. How can I avoid it? So stop putting yourself in those situations where what you know is at the end of that dark alley doesn't jump out and bite you, okay? And there's so much more. So, um, you know, get in touch with me. You know, share your story with people. Like, like rebuilding that inner confidence comes from removing the mask of shame and letting yourself be seen and seen to yourself. So I encourage you to, to look at where you, you doubt yourself and say, you know, is it really true that I'm, I'm this worthless or I'm incapable or what have you? Work each week, like little things. I'll leave some tips maybe in this video post. Um, and I want to do a, a blog post about this as well, that, that, can, that can rebuild that confidence, rebuild that. Because where you're going with this is that time comes when you need to make a decision, like a final burn the boats, we're no going back um, decision. When you have that inner self-confidence, you will have what it takes to do that and follow through. And until then, you waver. You end up in that gray zone, um, you know, back and forth, back and forth, not believing in yourself. So how can you get out of the gray zone, rebuild your inner confidence? So when you say, okay, enough, this is it, I've, I've decided, you actually believe it. Because that gray zone, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm on, I'm off. Oh, I failed again, I failed again. Keep trying, sure. But get yourself out of that gray zone by rebuilding that confidence, letting go of doubt, and, and recognizing how great you really are now. Hope this helps. Like the video if it was helpful for you. Thanks.